I believe uh, very much in energy. I believe very much in enthusiasm. I believe in people that can run. Um, and I believe in people that can play football. Sticking my fans hat on, I'd want to pay money to come and watch somebody that can go past people and excite me and get me off my seat. When I decided, along with the board, that this is the man I wanted to come on board, I knew damn well he wasn't a puppet, and I knew he'd do it his own way. And I knew, I knew at the end of the day, he's got an opportunity now. I believe in him. That's not a vote of confidence, it's just a fact. I'll be happy when I think we're where we should be, and that's the promised land. And there is nowhere else to be. To be mid-table or just down below 1680, that's not right, that's not good enough. If you want to do anything in life, you've got to give it your best shot. And you've got to get players in that want to do that and that are hungry enough to put that shirt on week in, week out and to go and try and win football matches. Nah, I don't want to draw. I want to win. And I want to win big. Now, we might not have the financial muscle that some clubs have got. OK, fine. But what we do have here is we have an opportunity, because let's face it, Everybody thinks that we are mid-table. Some of you think we're mid-table because I hear you tonight and it's, well, we shouldn't have done this and we shouldn't have done that. We will play an attacking, expansive game here. We will attack teams, we'll go at teams, we will beat them. We might lose a few games, of course we will. We're growing and we're learning. But you will come and watch it and you'll go away and you'll have something to talk about. When we're all walking around the pitch with our kids and we've got what we need to get to get where we want to get to, when you've got all that yellowing and you're singing and you're happy and you can go home and get drunk and enjoy the fact that we're up where we should be again, then it'll be worth it. And that's what keeps me going. And that's what we're going to do. So get ready. It had been a busy Vicarage Road summer. The camera's out in force. More, then. Faces old and faces new. People have all got opinions and particularly, you know, people like Diehard fans that are Watford through and through may have thought perhaps one or two of the uh, of the decisions for people to leave, staff and players, might have been a little bit harsh, it might have been a little bit um, daft in some cases, um, but I knew, I knew what I wanted to do uh, from the very outset. Uh, I was lucky that I uh, had the opportunity to view people under pressure. Um, I knew what uh, dynamics I needed in my team on and off the pitch, and, uh, and I knew what I had to keep and what I had to change, and, and when I changed it, uh, I expected to get a, a lot of stick because people are, are you know, loyal and caring, and I understand that. Um, but I've brought in the people that I think can do the job, and so far they're, they're doing that. Ben, welcome to Watford. Did you just sign for Man United? An easy decision then to go out on loan? Yeah, uh, definitely. Um, the chance, uh, chance to come up on loan, you know, it's, uh, it's a great chance for me, and I'm, uh, I'm just looking forward to it now. Uh, just, you know, we've got some good goalkeepers here, and I'm just looking forward to battling out for that number one spot and uh, hopefully being number one goalie. When you signed for Man United, did they make it clear that this would be the sort of experience building thing you'd expect to have to do in, in your early years? Yeah, that was it. Uh, straight away, you know, when we was, um, I think when they was uh, doing contract negotiations, they said, you know, it's, it's one thing that we want, we want to do to, you know, straight away, get you straight on loan, get more games, get more experience, you know, and uh, you can't beat it, you know, they, they do it a lot at Man United. Chris Eagles, you know, come in here last season, you know, and uh, he, he told me how much he enjoyed it, so it was an easy decision, really. Meeting Adrian Boothroyd, then obviously different to meeting to Alex Ferguson, but you've, you've heard obviously about him as all players try and check out a new manager, don't they? What, what, uh, what have you heard? That's it, yeah, you know, before, before I came, you know, I've talked to uh, Tony Coton, who used to be at Watford himself, you know, he said, he said I know AD, I know, he knows AD well, he said, you know, he's a top man, top manager, got new ideas and that, he's a good young manager and you'll, you'll do well there. Um, it's good to be back in the Championship and to be playing football uh, again, um, given a chance by Watford. Um, obviously, I've had a disappointing time at Forest um, due to my own standards, but you know I'm looking to get me a done and work hard, and um, hopefully things will move on from there. 
at your age, would you say you're sort of at something of a crossroads in terms of whether your career's going to stay pretty static or is it going to really move on from here? Yeah, definitely. It's an important season for me. Um, last two seasons have been up and down due to injury and uh, obviously um, not getting in the team. But um, yeah, I'm looking to, as I said, re-establish that at Watford and just get regular football and, and, and start looking at the goals again. Any doubts when Watford came in or did, did you fancy the move immediately? Obviously Forrest got relegated, so that must have been a big factor in the decision. Yeah, I mean, I um, wasn't too sure what was going to happen over the summer. Um, I just took my mind off football and uh, went on holiday with the family and friends. Um, and came back and, and it, it, there was a, a few things that, uh, that came up and um, Watford were one of them and there was a, a few other clubs but you know um, my short spell with uh, AD at Leeds I think um, confirmed everything for me because you know I saw the respect that um, everybody had for him at Leeds and uh, and I know that he's a, a young or well new manager in the game and he's enthusiastic and, and I, I want to work with him and due to the course me being back in London where um, it's my hometown and I've got a little girl now, so it'd be good for her to be back around her family. You know, four days' time, it's going to be 13, 14, 15,000 into Vicarage Road here. Uh, uh, not a new experience, but certainly a welcome one, eh? Yeah, it's uh, it's probably going to be, you know, maybe the biggest career game in my career so far, Saturday, you know. If, uh, it's a big season for me, this. Uh, I want to I wanna do well, get as many games as I can, and then uh, go back to Manchester United next season, and uh, we'll take it from there. You must have heard of Watford as a family club and here we are today on the photo call and there's families been invited in to get autographs. Have you you getting that warmth of feeling already from the supporters? Yeah, it's brilliant, you know, that that's another thing that people have told me, you know, told me it's a it's a lovely little, little sort of family family club sort of thing and uh, it's it's very you feel very welcomed when you're here, you know. I've heard that the fans are good as well. Like like at Wrexham, uh, that's that's all that also is a sort of a family club and uh, the fans the fans are brilliant there. I want to make people uh, want to come to work and have a smile on their face, enjoy what they're doing. You know, I don't want to make it out that it's some kind of comedy sketch when they come through the door. The players work extremely hard. But what I've managed to do with their help is create a culture where it actually is fun to come in and work hard and learn and get better. And that was Henderson, and this is Marlon King. Change of direction for Ashley Young. Doily goes scamper, Young plays the ball across for Henderson. And that's a superb opening goal, and what a way for the big money signing to make his mark. Ashley Young provides the cross, and Darius Henderson, the six foot one centre forward on the end of it. It's a real centre forwards goalless. Young's cross, look at that, he was unmarked and Carlo Nash stood rooted to the line. Change of direction is on if he wants it with um, Sedgwick far side. But McKenna's gone on his own. And that might be an opportunity now for Nugent. Still Nugent and Preston have equalised. Statuesque in front of Ben Foster. And Preston square it after 22 minutes. Callum Davidson takes. They were queuing up for it, and it was off the line by Jordan Stewart, who did his job. Sedgwick. Presswell. A two who and Jordan Stewart, and nothing wrong with the ball and nothing wrong with the finish either and Preston take the lead through Dixon Atuhu and he just ran and ran and ran Young went on and an opportunity for King and it's gone for a corner So the corner comes in. Back for Bozaki again. And Evans got there before Foster. And our dial lead after just three minutes. Foster is with the Devon side. 
And here's another opportunity, and it's Capaldi. And Capaldi compounds Watford's early woes. They need the opportunity. Now they may have the opportunity on the break. This is McNamee. And the good save by the goalkeeper. But Marlon King follows up. And Watford right back in it. McNamee from the left. And Marlon King makes it 2 1. Need a hash of that. But it isn't clear yet. And it's Wooten. And it's 3 1 Plymouth. Ashley Young might be tempted. And he's tempted. Super strike by the youngster. Six minutes after half time, Watford back in it. Super free kick. Foster makes the clearance. Now maybe for Young. Oh, that's beautifully done. Super finish. And it's 3 3. The free kick was special. That was lethal. Well, after the game against Preston, the way we started the match, um, speaking to their staff after the game, they they had a, a a fear of us. They were afraid. They came here and they played a certain way. And then we weren't, you know, our youthfulness and our naivety, in many ways, allowed Preston back into the game. And they ended up getting a, you know, a, a win two one, and, and probably could have scored more. Uh, and we allowed that. They, we beat ourselves rather than Preston beat us. And that was a big learning for us. Then we go down to, to Plymouth and uh, we put in a, a shambolic performance in the first half and just roll over. And um, at half time, I think, was it was a turning point where I asked the players to make a choice whether they wanted to be promotion uh, candidates or whether they just wanted to be average like they were the year before uh, or the year before that. And um, they made a choice. We've made a choice. Anybody that comes into this team and this environment makes a choice to be the best they can be and to push themselves and the team harder than they've ever done before. And if we do that, and we have done that in certain periods, and we learn, then they'll get better. And that's what's happened. Henderson, strong in the air, now Marlon King, excellent strike, and Watford have an early lead, and it's Marlon King with a fabulous finish. Magnificent, absolutely superb, the two new strikers together, it's as if they've played together all season, because look at this, the way that he peels off with the header, and then the take from Marlon King just lobs it inside Darren Purse, he can't move big Darren Purse, because the touch is so good and it's just away from him, there it is, he tries to stick out a left leg, the next touch is brilliant. Devlin again, this time for Marlon King, who battles with Lubens. Devlin, another inviting cross, and it's a different outcome this time. It's been tucked away by Darius Henderson, and Watford are two up early in the second half. Well, that was better, he did get a bit of power on it this time, but Darren Purse, what are you doing? You had a warning a few minutes ago when he crept in behind you and had a free header. This time, you stood watching the ball once again, and all he does is he moves a yard away from you at the back post, the arm goes up, Purse is underneath the ball, and then he starts to get the power on it. The direction is down into the bottom corner, and this time, the slight deflection comes off Purse's head as he heads it back across the goal. He's in front of him, there's the deflection, takes it into the near post. 2-0. Broken kindly to Devlin. Ashley Young. And Gavin Marr with the hit. It's cannoned off Leuvens, but Marlon King fires in his second of the game. Three goals and surely three points for Watford 
who have been hugely impressive at Ninian Park tonight. Well, yeah. They have been superb tonight, and it's another great finish, although it gets a big deflection off Glenn Lubens, and that's why the goalkeeper, Neil Alexander, is upset with it, because he thinks he's got this covered when it comes off of Marlon King's left foot, but just watch the big deflection from Lubens, takes it off his foot, takes it away from the goalkeeper, and up and over the top of him, and when you knocks in, that's how it happens. Hardly, now, onside. Cameron Jerome, surely going to finish it, yes he does, long way to go yet, but Cardiff have a goal back through Cameron Jerome. Devlin, needs to use the trickery, did use the trickery, there's the cross for kick, just got a touch on it. No power and not the direction he wanted. But a positive piece of play by Paul Devlin. And that's a good ball by Mackay for King. And King could be in here. And King is in here. And Watford lead by goal to nil. All so simple, and it was the ball from Malky Mackay and the pace of Marlon King that did the damage, and Watford lead by a goal to nil. There was the Mackay ball. There was the King control. There was the goal-scoring finish. And Akinbae is onside here. Foster must make the save. And Foster made a very good save, I thought. But Mr Messias has said penalty. And now, what colour will the card be for Foster? If he's played the man, he's in big trouble here. And it will be Gareth O'Connor from the spot against Ben Foster. 1-1. One, one. King. Man, that's a nice move. Now Young, plenty forward in this attack for Watford. He's got Jordan Stewart outside him. Here's Gavin Mann. Here's Mann's effort deflected. And in! I think, but Gavin Nard got the goal, and Watford are back in front, and it's a really good move that's produced the goal. I think we'll see that Brian Jensen was undone by the deflection. Crossfield ball, young for Mann, now did he take a deflection? Yeah, it did. That's what defeated Jensen. Chambers might yet open up for him. It's a good ball for Devlin. King and Henderson are the targets. Jensen right the way across. Young far post. And in the end, it's in the side netting. But it was Chambers who started it with a good ball. Lloyd Doyle is preparing for action. Blizzard ball across. And Ashti Young, as the keeper hasn't got, and Micah Hyde has cleared over his own bar. Defending well, the early right back. There was the ball across Jensen. I don't know what he was up to, but Micah Hyde, not for the first time in his life, put one over the rookery end bar. Chris McCann. Burnley have certainly had plenty of possession. O'Connor goes on. Noel Williams. This is McCann. 
right the way across the whole lot of them. Opportunity knocks in the end, and Blizzard made the clearance. Finally, it's Noel Williams, and it's Foster with an excellent save. He's made two real good ones in the second half. It's sat up nicely for Noel Williams. And Foster on tiptoes doing the necessary. Clark Carlisle. Now Henderson against the goalkeeper Jensen. And the referee says play on with Jensen on the line. Right the way across from Henderson. Devlin, the goalkeeper is still down. And in the end, the play will be allowed to continue only as far as Spring, who makes it 3-1 Watford with the goalkeeper flat on his back and in trouble. So Matthew Spring scores on his debut. And for all the protests, Mr Messias allowed play to continue. And Matthew Spring has won it for Watford for sure. I suppose for any new player coming to a football club to score in his debut is all he can ask, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah, it's good. Uh, just especially with the, the situation as well, got to get the fans on side. So hopefully that's gone uh, a little way to doing that. And at that end as well. And at that end as well, yeah. So it was good, yeah. But a bit of a bizarre afternoon. I mean, as far as you were concerned, the fact there was no goalkeeper on the line was was irrelevant. You just well, had no, you, waiting, the ultimate example of playing to the whistle. Yeah, I was waiting for the ref to blow up. Too fair, you let it go across the goal back again, and then. But no, you just got to play on. I suppose as I know the goalie was injured, but no, I'm glad to get off the mark. I think we have got to make uh, Watford um, fortress. Really, we've uh, got two decent results away and scored six goals, and there wasn't no reason why we couldn't take it at home. And as I said, we've got to make teams uh, work for their points when they come in. Good start for you, but uh, a great ball from Malky, who, of course, uh, presumably there wasn't much training sessions between you two this week. No, definitely, but malky has uh, he's been around the league and he, he's been to the Premiership and obviously um, him and um, Clark Carlisle are forming a, a good defence and obviously Jay Demerit, we can't forget about him, he's, he's played his part and will do this season, but yeah, he's just... The manager just said, just put him behind because me and um, Darius was causing him all sorts of problems and it paid off. How much had you actually done with the players since you moved? Because it all happened fairly late in the week, uh, didn't it? Yeah, uh, just Friday morning. We trained Friday morning, just done a, uh, a little bit, set pieces, and that was it, really. Um, so, yeah, I was a, just rushed down there. I had no boots to train in Friday, so I had to try and sort all that out for today. So, But, no, it's been all right. Hopefully uh, next week I can settle in a bit a bit better and uh, and then move on to the Saturday. And a great confidence booster for everybody. First home win of the season, whatever the situation, is always an important day in every campaign. Oh yeah, of course. As long as you every every win's good, but yes, especially winning at home and that you've got to keep winning at home, uh, make it harder harder for teams to come here and, and, and play. Um, but I think I don't think we've, we've we've done our best today. But I think coming out of it with with a win, I think always uh, always stands you in good stead. Was it, would it be fair to say that, that one of the nicest things about today was we saw you get the early goal against Preston and then you couldn't hold it once Preston got level. But the fact is that it's shown us though that this team had grown and had learnt from that Preston experience because in the end you've won quite comfortably. Yeah, I mean the first game is always an, uh, an up and down game and we started well against uh, Preston and, and, and we couldn't maintain it. And I think as we're gradually getting on, we're getting to know each other and we're getting to um, maintain our, 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 um, our leads and obviously... Um, adding to them as well so it is a good thing and we've got another game um, Tuesday and another game Sunday so they're coming thick and fast and we just got to focus on the next game which is not scanning. This is Blizzard. Well as a spring Mad uh, Bangura and this is McNamee. Five-man passing mode. McNamee tries the final ball for Ashley Young. That's a brilliant goal and a really good move. Rounded off in style by the youngster. Five passes. McNamee's cross. And they didn't pick up the little fella at the far post. See it again here. McNamee, three balls forward. There's the cross. Ashley Young arrives unmarked. Waza wasn't needed and Watford lead one to nothing with 13 minutes to go. Young. McNamee, Young, he's done nicely. Boazza and Blizzard in the box. Young went all the way. And that is a penalty. Challenge on Ashley Young. And suddenly Doyley steps in. 
Julian Bodek less than impressed and said so. Penalties over the years. The cup ties have not been Watford's happiest suit. And Boaza wants his say to ensure that doesn't stay much longer. What a good penalty. 2-0, Watford ahead. Young, been a real handful. That's nice from Spring. Young, first time baller, back across for Blitzen. Milkington didn't get. Blizzard first to the rebound. And it's three. Well done by Matthew Spring. Ashley Young, the supply line. And Dominic Blizzard on the end of it. Makes it three. Mariapa. And suddenly County are in a one-on-one -on -one here. And it's Palmer against Alec Chamberlain. And County have a goal. Palmer, the County goal scorer. Talked about Palmer's who scored goals, of course... Uh, I was mentioning earlier about players that have played for both teams. One, Charlie Palmer, again live here and went on to play for Notts County with distinction. As Chamberlain this time is forced into a very good save by, Bar by Chris Palmer. Early stroke. Kane King for McNamee. This is McNamee again. 20 forward, Henderson goes through. And the goalkeeper smothers. And the final clearance away is by Sonko. McNamee wants to run at them. Henderson's so keen to do well against his former club. And Sonko making the save. And a free kick. And a good tip over by Foster from Sonko. Shorey took the free kick. One of those awkward dippers. Foster's done well. Wow joins the fun. Young's corner. And Mackay! And the Scotsman just wide of the target. Run up well at the far post. Watch the young doing a few miles. One, two, three, four, five to aim at. And this is Henderson. Off the line by Harper. Young back in. Good positioning from James Harper. And Darius Henderson did everything right, just found the only man on the line. It's an even better shot of Harper's heroics. Spring. And again, that's nice. Now McNamee might take on his man. Does! I wonder where a goal is going to come from. Harper! Good save by Foster. He took off early. Harper's hit this well. And Foster making a good stop. Ball. 
for Rajak. And they divided all of them. Chance comes back in for Boulder. And Derby ahead. Four minutes played. And Adam Boulder gets the goal. It's a good ball for Chambers. And he goes down and the referee's given the penalty. He's given the penalty for Jackson's foul on Chambers. Derby protest. Jackson sent off. Derby going to have to play the rest with 10. But they'll play the rest from a 1-0 position. King's penalty against the post. Goalkeeper had gone the wrong way. I mean, good work. They're spreading it, trying to use the width. And this is McNamee. And the opportunity for Matthew Spring to tie it up at 1-1. One -one. Watford grasping the opportunity. And at the three-quarter point of the game, the 11 men are now level. Derby less than pleased with that free-kick award. And Watford make something of it. McNamee. Collar! They have made something of it. And with just a couple of minutes to go, Watford celebrate. Derby are furious. McNamee across. And Carlisle makes it 2 1. It's a, it's a question of keeping momentum going during the fortnight break. Or just less than fortnight. This is King. Now for McNamee. And Devlin arriving and scoring. Nobody picked out the flying skull at the far post. Doesn't score too many with his head. But it's an inch perfect cross by McNamee. And the markers went AWOL. Brammer, one of those who has got a good record with such kicks. That was Chadwick. And here's an opportunity. Dubry went forward. It's still not away. And Watford riding their luck. And now they come forward themselves. King. Young went for the return. Chambers on the overlap. Young's in the middle. Again, Stoke come forward. Again, Watford have to beat the retreat. And it's come for Chadwick. Opportunity here. Foster so keen to do well. Relieved to see that go. Young's free kick then. And it's gone straight in. I don't think anybody else got a touch. And certainly the way they are mobbing Ashley Young. No, nope, it's gone straight in from the free kick. Carlisle's clearance. And that was done for Young, who is onside here. Got Chambers to his right. Young goes on and goes down. And the referee says penalty. Siemenson on Young. And what does Nigel Miller do now? It was the goalkeeper's challenge that felled him. And Siemenson is sent off. So for the second Watford match running, the opposition lose a man to a red card. And King, this time, unlike Derby, makes absolutely no mistake.
header by Safri. Jordan Stewart for Watford. Fleming. Not away with the challenge, which the referee saw nothing wrong with. Carlisle, chase for King, who's got the right side of the defender this time. And King has gone on! And Martin King has scored for Watford! A really good individual strike. The clearance stand field. And when the defender didn't get it, it was still at a cute angle. And he's done enough to put it past Robert Green. Matthew Spring. Interesting ball. Important stop by Shackle as uh, King was ready to pounce, but King now has, and this is McNamee. And now for Devlin, needs to deliver quality, does deliver quality, spring at the far post. Got on it well, and it was just wide of the target. Marnie. Colin, Chambers away, Springs deflection, and that might be very interesting now. For Marlon King with Ashley Young scamper, scamper to his right. Here's Young, only King in the middle. McNamee arriving, Young goes himself. Oh, brilliant! That is a superb second from Ashley Young. And Watford have had two chances and have scored two five-star goals. The first from Marlon King and the second an absolute rocket from Ashley Young. And it was King who fed Young, and you were expecting this to come back in. Young had other ideas, though. Young's free kick. Safri. Spring. Free kick is Watford's. King. And Young is on his way here. Opportunity for Mackay! How oh, we'd have loved that against his old club. I needed to make sure it wasn't me. I had to go and get an appointment at the opticians and swallow my words. Marky Mackay playing the centre forward role here in the final minutes of the 45. Very satisfying at 45. For the home faithful, Mackay. Young at this time got a touch on it, and King hits the post, and it comes back into Robert Green's arms. Opportunism from Marlon King, and what but so agonisingly close to a third. Paul Armstrong making a point to Malky Mackay. Marlon King has come across to have his say as well. It's Ashley Young and Anthony McNamee, and it'll be Ashley Young. And he forced Robert Green into orbit. Devlin on his way here. Davenport. Marnie. This B has to stay on side and he may well get the opportunity here and does get the opportunity to put Norwich right back in it. Marnie's effort. Foster could only parry. And Kevin Lisby puts Norwich City back into it at 2-1. Who would have thought at half-time it would have been the Watford fans calling for Paul Armstrong's final whistle? This is Hughes. There's the cross. Queuing up for it. Foster's done well again. And he's made two critical saves. Yes, all right, the first one didn't count. But this is a really good stop. I think uh, the first half they, they weren't at it, you know, we were and we were, we were you know, the better team by you know, ten, ten times as good as them, you know, and uh, I think at half time we just said, you know, just keep going, I think we could get four, five, six goals here, you know, but uh, the second half, you know, they've come out and they've, uh, they've got at us straight away to be fair, you know, we've, 
we've come off and we're, we're thankful, thankful that we've got the win. If uh, Marlon's third would have got in, I think uh, I think that would have totally killed them and they wouldn't have come out you know the way that they did. But you know, credit to them, they've uh, they've come out and they they made a game of it. You know. Uh, and uh, it, was a, it was a tense finish. What was Ashley Young's strike like from ground level? I mean, <laughs> up in the gods, it looked a super strike. Yeah, from uh, back in that goal, it looked a super strike as well. You know, and I think uh, on his uh, his weaker foot as well, he's just. <laughs> I, I say, you know, I say to him that he's just swung it and hoped for the best, but he'll, he'll tell you different. But yeah, it was a great goal. You know, I think it's caught the goalie completely by surprise, putting it in the top corner, and a great goal by the left. Doily did well to recover from the initial error and goes on his way here and he's onside Ashley Young opportunity for Henderson and in the end it's put behind by Kozler for the corner and what a chapter of accidents that was Ashley Young fed by Lloyd Doily ball across Darius Henderson stuffed it his toe at it and Rob Kozler's clearance almost embarrassed Kenny McNamee's corner and Carlisle is up and Henderson is in. Darius Henderson for it. Credit Carl Carlisle for the assist. And Henderson at the far post gives Watford the lead. McNamee's corner. It was Carlisle that did it. And Darius Henderson squeezed it in. And Watford lead by one to nothing. 39 minutes played. Henderson might make this interesting still, and does make it interesting. It's 2 0 at Watford, and it's a disaster for the Sheffield United back line. Unsworth and Bronby get in a mess, Kenny can do nothing, and the substitute has doubled Watford's lead. Didn't seem to be anything on the bounce of the ball. Now look here at the two defenders, they got in each other's way. It's defending from the Chamber of Horrors and the ultimate horror for Neil Warnock's men is that Darius Henderson has doubled Watford's lead. Kozluk, Eiffel, did well. Mackay got an important touch, it wasn't a clean one. And in the end, Unsworth wanted to hit it and Quinn decided to go with it. It's gone across now for Kozluk. The header is a very good goal. And it's been scored by Phil Jagielka for Sheffield United. It didn't seem as though there was anything on. Henderson made a hash of it. It was Montgomery's ball for Eiffel. Sheffield United now try and turn the screw. And 2-2 is the score. Eiffel, let's fly. And United are on level terms with two in ten minutes. Now, what has happened here is a Sheffield United player has gone to ground. Got to confess I didn't see it, but Mark Clattenburg wants words with his assistant referee here. And a red card is shown to Malky Mackay. Kosluk is on the ground and Malky Mackay has been sent off. Now, Carl Fletcher might have a go from here. Ashley Young and Carl Fletcher are over the ball. It's going to be Young and Kenny's made a super stop. Super save. Kozluk. And Weber is onside, doily away. They're queuing up for it here, and it'll come for Eiffel. And in the end, it's gone in his own net of Clark Carlisle. And Sheffield United are 3-2 in front. Doily's throw. Kenny hasn't got opportunity for Stewart. Great stop by Paddy Kenny. 
because it was on target from Jordan Stewart. It was the long throw. And when it came to Stewart, he waited for it to sit up. Great save by the big Sheffield United goalkeeper. Got five to aim at in the box. Seol and also Cameron towards the edge of the box. And Wolves are in the lead from the set piece. As easy as you like. And the man who has the final touch. Not for the first time this season. Is Kenny Miller. Diagaraga offers the short option. And rather made a mess of the ball back. But now McNamee's got a chance. There's the ball in towards Clark Hollow. And Francis, he was offside anyway. And that will spare his blushes. Here's McNamee's corner in stoppage time at the break. Carlisle is up, and Carlisle squares it for Watford in stoppage time. A very simple set piece. And the Wolves look at each other. And the captain, who got one in the wrong end on Saturday, squares it with a very simple header. Boazza, now spring, final ball, only finds Olofanjana, and that's Seal, who's got time, manages Jordan Stewart, Edwards, Cameron, Miller, that's a good ball in, and the final ball for Georgian Dar, and wide of the target. Naylor takes Georgian Dar in the box. Olifanjana is also on the six yard line. And it was in Dar, and it was a super stop by Chamberlain. Great piece of goalkeeping. And Dar and Chamberlain saw it late. There was a whole stack of people in his line of view. Matthew Springs free kick. Doyle's gone to join the attack, they're queuing up for it! And the header is by Clark Carlisle again! Another set play, and the captain puts Watford in front! Super free kick by Matthew Spring, all sorts of trouble, and it's Clark Carlisle in the same goal that he scored the first one. And Watford, in extra time, lead by two goals to one. A battle, but it's all about round three, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean, uh, it didn't look likely after we'd gone a goal down quite early in the game. Um, obviously, they've, they've got a strong squad, so on paper, probably had a stronger side than us. But uh, there's, there's a good spirit in the camp, and uh, we fought back well. How important, particularly with a young side, to get level literally seconds before half time, I bet it made a, an enormous difference to the mood in the, in the home dressing room, didn't it? Yeah, I think so, because I think, uh, to be fair to Wolves, they gave us a little bit of the run around first half. Uh, we struggled to cope with their, their movement in midfield. And, uh, you know, by the end of the half, <coughs> I think we'd gone man for man and uh, started to get a grip with things. And the, the, the goal, as you say, gave us a big lift. And uh, we took that into the second half. What about Clark Carlisle? Obviously, you played against him. Yeah, and this season you played for him. I mean, they're two superb headers, aren't they? That's right. Yeah. I mean, Clark's, um, you know, he's well documented his, his danger from set pieces, and uh, he's coming to his own tonight and scored two cracking goals. And uh, we're just hoping that that's the start of. Uh, well, he's already obviously won games for us at Derby, uh, and I gave him a bit of stick afterwards. After after Saturday's goal, he's uh, he's glad that he's found the right ender uh, again. And obviously for the youngsters, it's a great experience for them. It, it, it's a great. There's no feeling for them like a winning feeling, is there? No, uh, you know, he's just got. It is a good experience just to play out there in, on the, you know, first team environment against better players, and they'll learn a great deal more than that than they probably will from uh, ten reserve games. Uh, so it's, you know, it's been a, a fast learning curve, and, and nice to see about three three lads make their debuts tonight. Quickly taken. Young to McNamee. Kalal is there, good save, and hooked off the line eventually. Moss was there, but it was Lunt who got it clear. This is Chambers. Kalal is still in there. 
Fletcher, Chambers, back to Doyle. Now Young. Watford looking to keep the heat on. And that cross won't do it. Corner has been given. But uh, it was Kenny Lunt, sentry on duty, who just managed to reach the ball before it crossed the line, I think. As you were, back to your positions. This time it's Benjamin. And Lunt is able to watch that one past his post. With an aerial threat first from Carlisle, the centre half, and then from Benjamin, the centre forward. Young takes this time, headed away by Moss, hit by Jordan Stewart, and that's a really good save. Not sure how much Ross Turnbull really saw all that. Stewart's briskly struck volley, coming over a crowd of players, and Turnbull. McNamee takes towards Carlisle once more, Grant trying to force it in. Turnbull again with some very sound keeping. Picked off by McNamee, who immediately looks to release Grant with a well-delivered pass. Benjamin! What would have been inches away in the last few minutes. That was a lovely sweeping move. Trevor Benjamin and Ross Turnbull, both the worst for work. Well delivered cross by the substitutes. Very quickly looked at ease at this level. Is that a match you could should have won? I think after the first half performance, uh, the crew were the better team. In fairness, they moved us around. We played at their tempo. Uh, the second half, we showed a lot more energy uh, and enthusiasm to want to go and win the game. And I felt we were unfortunate at the end. And I thought uh, I'm pleased with the draw, uh, with a nil-nil draw. Sorry, a clean sheet. Um, but I would have preferred to win, obviously. But um, it's not an easy place to come. <laughs> Taken the rain well. Oh, and he hasn't got opportunity, maybe. And Adabola has put Coventry in front. Foster looks to the referee, but the goal stands. We need to settle down. We need to take the game to Coventry City. This is flood. And it's in. It's 2 0. And the young Irishman doubles the Sky Blues lead. Target Young, good control, good effort, oh, brilliantly done. The first touch gave him the opportunity. And how well did he take that? Watford right back in it. Sleeves, they fight and they battle, but here is McSheffrey, and McSheffrey surely has settled it. 3 1 Coventry. And still Blake, opportunity for Hulse, still goes off the post, not once but twice, and Mackay away. And how close were leads to opening the scoring? Both posts and the Scotsman to the rescue. Richardson, hunting forward, and this evaded all of them, and Lewis! Chambers, and now Young, his chance, Neil Sullivan makes the save.
Ahmad. Carlisle. King. And a young in the centre. Chambers. Again, it's all just a little bit deliberate. Now a chance for a bit of pace. Back the And Douglas was back pedalling. He hasn't scored yet this season. Well, Patrick Kisnorbo has probably seen more of the ball than anybody else with these throws. And here comes another one. And not a bad one. This time it was Clark Carlisle managed to get it away. Marlon King up in the air. Stearman waits for it to drop. And he just to shield it away and then give it away. Ashley Young, if he's got the legs, it's one against one. With Johansson, he's round Johansson. Here comes Douglas, Ashley Young all the way, and off the line by Dublin. Well, you won't come closer than that. 27 minutes in, he did everything right, and then Dion Dublin to Leicester's rescue. Well... Momo Silla. Stearman. And well to get his feet in, his footing back. His Norbo. Shapes of the shot. Didn't have a go. Silla might. Here's Stephen Hughes on the back post. It's gone in from Mark De Vries. And less than a minute after their captain cleared off the line, Leicester City are in front. McCarthy's got King at his back. Deals with it competently enough. Dublin lets it run. He could have put his team in trouble. Ashley Young! 1-1! One, one. Ashley Young, seventh of the season. And Watford are back in business three minutes into the second half. As Dio Dublin puts his hand in the air and says, yep, that was my mistake. Ashley Young, though, at second time, he had one cleared off the line by Dublin in the first half. In the second half, he makes certain that Watford are back level. Stearman's come up from the back this time, and he's got in, and they have done. It's Kids Norbo, the Australian, who has made it 2-1 within a minute. And once more, Momo still the provider. De Vries. To Johnson. Hamill. Hume had started the run the other side of Moggy Mackay. Here is Hume, chance to wrap it up. Oh, another chance. And Watford let off the hook. Foster. Dublin and Mackay, Carlisle there as well. Charles for Marlon King. Well, the hands on the head say it all. That's what putting the big men up front does for you. Causes some problems inside the opposing defence. And when it falls for your top scorer, you expect a better finish than that. Again, they're stretching it. And Brandt is onside, and this is a real chance for Wednesday. And Chris Brandt opens the scoring. Good. About five minutes, and Young, from close range, squares it. And he did well, he was in a real pocket, the defender round him. There's the ball in, King Young, the woodwork, and in the end, cleared away. So that's actually Young's free kick. Hewing up for it, Carlisle. He's got to down running quickly. We've got the defender getting a good head on it. Queuing up, Carlisle's gone forward, Ashley Young, and again, it's just over. Arius Henderson, 
coming in at the far post. Keeper and centre half not quite on the same wavelength, but there was no damage. And now a chance for Forster. Ball played to him by Magilton, and now for Curry. Foster's come a very long way out. Curry still goes. Got Richards in support if he wants it. He's gone himself, Curry. Took his time. Foster scampered out. It was all well. Young. Henderson to his right, but Young's gone on here. Now this is Henderson. Marlon King to the right. And it's which a stretch here. Results. Chambers. Foster's long clearance. That was McEverly. And this is Devlin. Opportunity to pick a spot. Henderson arrives, keeper saves, it might come for Young and does. And Watford have broken through at last. Well, Matthew Spring had the intelligence not to be caught offside by standing in the goal. It was Devlin's cross. Henderson arriving at the far post, got the header on it. Credit Supple for the save. Now look at Matthew Spring here. He's off the field of play, he's in the goal. And Ashley Young's header does the rest. Spring. Doily. Henderson. Good save by Supple. Gain the crosses doing the day, doing the real work. Supple made a good stop. The first like, 50 minutes of the game, you know, it, it was a battle. Um, both teams were feeling each other, um, you know, feeling around, see who could get on top of the game, and, and thankfully for us, it was us who did. Yeah, it's very important to get the uh, three points, especially uh, coming to a ground like Ipswich. Um, just getting back on the track of uh, winning, really, and getting three points is uh, even better. Everything becomes a habit, and it had been six games and three draws, three losses, and uh, it was important that we pick up three points. Um, because that, that gets us, you know, start, starting back in the right direction. So hopefully we can build on this. I don't think he's had one below, you know, good performance at all this season. He's been absolutely excellent, and he's a a real good uh, a leader at the front. You know, he leads by example. You know, he'll never stop running about, and it's a it's like I said, it's a good example for the rest of the lads. And uh, you know, we've got to try and and keep up with his standards. Yeah, that's right. It's good to see all the fans are uh, happy, uh, cheering and clapping at the end, and then singing my name's even better. So, uh, you know, we just want to say thanks to the fans for travelling away, and um, let's keep winning, really. It's the uh, first time in a while. I, I look forward to going into training. You know, I'm really enjoying playing my football, and I think I can speak for the rest of the squad. The gaffer makes it really enjoyable. We work at the right times, and, and we play at the right times, and uh, it, it's, it's fun going back to work again. Wigan, the Premiership surprise packet in the early part of the season. And it was at the JJB that Watford's Carling Cup hopes were ended. Jay Demerit penalised for a challenge. Seven minutes into extra time. And Ryan Taylor broke the deadlock. Watford had defended well. Once again, they'd given a few of their youngsters a run out, noticeably Joel Grant. And when you're one down, you have to go for it and take risks at the other end. And in the final four minutes of the game, Andreas Johansson scored two goals. There was to be no giant killing this time. an awful lot with uh, another home game for Watford on Tuesday. The Wolves so want revenge. And this is Miller. And Miller done, done well here, and that's a good save by Foster as Clark came in. Foster had to and be very alert. To merit in the end with the header away. 
from the Wolves. And now Clark goes for the return, gets past Doyley, and across to Foster again. Another good save. And he goes on. This is Anderton. Opportunity, Foster blocked. Edwards. Good covering tackle. Anderton went for position rather than power. Anderton's corner again. Huddleston. And Miller. Good save again by Foster. Like Horatio holds the bridge at times. The young Watford keepers excelled. Young's corner. And Demerit! They've broken through. And the popular American opens the scoring from Ashley Young's corner. To merit. It's a really good ball. Young now King. Keepers come, hasn't got. Oh, well done, King. That's brilliantly done from that angle. Again, Young involved. But how many people thought he'd given himself too much to do from that angle? Young's corner. And Devlin, it's three. A match turned totally on its head. Another notch in the Ashley Young assists column. Header into the path of Devlin. 3 0. And here's Seon, and they've got one, it's no more than consolation. Young takes, Mahan arrived, went right away over the top. Look to Martin Atkinson, who had a very good view and said nothing. McNamee this time, and a great save by Simon Royce. Well, the referee said nothing when the ball was played, and Mahn went for it. Here's the effort from McNamee, he took the responsibility himself, and it was a very, very good save by Royce. Here's the... Mahn, now Devlin. It's a good, fast tempo to the game. Devlin for Doyley. King and Young are forward. Doyley needs assistance. Comes in the shape of Matthew Spring. That's a good ball through for King. That's brilliantly done. And it's a really good save by Simon Royce from a wonderful touch by Marlon King. The goalkeeper had to make the save because the dummy to get him round the defender was quite audacious. Spring. Change of direction for Devlin. Little more than five minutes of the first half remain. Still nil-nil, and this is Devlin. Looks for Marlon King. McNamee is far side with a moment or two to consider his options. McNamee goes on, right the way back across. Young down this time, and it comes for Spring, and it's in the back of the net for Watford. And they have broken through with Matthew Spring's goal. McNamee with time up, considered his option, right the way across, King's jump, headed down, and Matthew Sprigg bravely falling, heads it in, and Watford lead by a goal to nil. Clark Carlisle clears, this is McNamee, looks for the option here. There's the cross, it's not a bad one, Spring was arriving, didn't quite reach him. 
Chambers under pressure from Santos. Young, his positioning was good. Here's Chambers with an opportunity. He'll go through. Good save by Royce. It's good play by James Chambers. And a very good piece of goalkeeping by Simon Royce. Young takes. Carlisle across. They all came charging in. Marlon de Merritt almost gone in each other's way. Here's Matthew Spring. Great stop by Royce. Young. King. And Young. Wide of the target. And again, it was Royce to the rescue. Doily. That's not a bad ball, and Sturridge is onside here, and Sturridge sees Foster put it over the top as Rangers thought he'd scored, and that's a really big stop by Fort by Ben Foster. Chambers this side was playing them onside, Sturridge through, Foster gets enough on it just to put it over the top. King opens up here for Spring. For McNamee, it's two, and that surely is the crucial moment in the game. And McNamee with the left foot, and Rangers, who've been looking the more likely side, are undone by defensive frailty here. King did well, but Matthew Spring spotted the unmarked McNamee. Could do nothing. Only Sturridge has stayed forward for Rangers. Young's free kick right away across. And did it touch anybody? I don't think it did. It's Ashley Young's goal. It's his tenth of the season. And we'll need another look. But I think that has gone straight in without Marlon King touching it. See it again. Now, has anybody got a touch on this? No. It's three, and it's Ashley Young's goal. Rangers third corner of the second half and Cook will take right away across and it's in Shitu's header and Rangers have a consolation with 91 minutes played a spare man here and this is an opportunity for Nick Palmby and after just six minutes Muller in front. The set play and Mann equalises within three minutes. Watford are level. Ashley Young's corner. Mann arriving. Another good clearance and did. And Woodhouse deflected and over by Foster. Come for spring. And he scored just before half time on Tuesday. And he scored just before half time on Saturday. Right footed this time into the top of the net. Oh, really rolling up the sleeves. And he's given the penalty. The challenge was inside the box. Green to square it. Oh dear. There's the free kick, Carlisle's come in, and Carlisle has put Watford into the lead. Clark Carlisle, loitering on the edge of the six-yard box. And he heads it home, and Watford ahead by a goal to nil. And suddenly... It opens up for him. King has to stay on side. Young, now for King. Diallo goes back, but is forced to make a clearance to McNamee. And Chambers, as Wednesday try to regroup. Mann. Whelan was playing him on. And here's McNamee. Whelan. Oh, he hasn't got! 
And Marlon King's made him pay for it. What a disaster for the goalkeeper. The spinning cross from Anthony McNamee. And Weaver hasn't got. And the final touch is by Marlon King at the far post. Oh, dear. King was the jam in the sandwich. This is Doyle. Ashley Young. Doyle. Now King. Looks to play it in for Spring. An opportunity. And deflected for the corner. And he had a real chance to make it three. And that will make Nicky Weaver feel better. Marlon King. McNamee, Young and Devlin, and he's onside here, McNamee. Good tackle by Chris Brunt, needed to be and was. McNamee, Chambers arrives. Good ball for Young, he's onside here. Young right away across, Devlin back across. No one in the middle but Matthew Spring. Deflected, King wide of target. Chris Brunt is the third player involved in the committee meeting. But Eagle's right foot might be the favourite. It's Brunt! And good save by Foster. Hit well, and Foster got down very sharply. Made a good stop. Well, I don't know how much more time there is, quite simply. I've not seen the board from the fourth official. We're deep into stoppage time. Agbonalo. Away by James Chambers, effort in the end, goes in, it's deflected in off Foster, and right at the end, Sheffield Wednesday have scored. And Bolleho, is there yet time? There is, you know, but he's put it widely, Peacock. If I'd have said to you back in August, before a ball had been kicked, that would reach the end of Sheffield Wednesday on the 19th of November, 35 points, five straight wins, five wins at home, which is the same as for the whole of last season, and third in the table, would you believe me? I don't think so, no. Um, we went into pre-season knowing we had a lot of good players, and we knew we've got off to a good start, we, we could be there or thereabouts, but not, not as high as what we have been so far. What do you put it down to? Just hard work, uh, belief in that we can beat teams um, home and away and the youngsters are, are just coming on and, and expressing themselves and it's working so far. And what will it need to stay in the thick of the promotion race until the chips are really down in April? I think just keep doing what we're doing, believing that we can we can beat most sides. Um, injuries as well, if we can stay injured, we've, we've been a little bit lucky so far so we can keep a lot of players off the treatment table, I think we'll, uh, we'll have half a chance. And the captain is fit and loving this, aren't you? This is why I come to the club. Um, I said to the gaffer in the summer, I want to get to the Premiership, and he said, so do I. So, long may this good run continue. I'm not, I'm not going to get excited. I'm quick to play it down because, you know, we, we, it's third and it's November, and that's all it is, you know. When we get to May and we're third and above, then I might start saying, well done. But we haven't done anything yet. We've done absolutely nothing yet. There are people out there that are still waiting for us to fall. There are people out there that are not quite sure about us yet. And there are people out there that come to Watford, come to Vicarage Road and are frightened to death of us. And, and they're quite right to be. Because we haven't finished yet. We've just got started. I keep saying that we're only at 60%. We're getting better all the time. We get into January, I might need to make a, a couple of additions um, to add to what we've got already, to really go for it. But we're here to be, we're here to be champions. We're here to push people to the very, very limits both internally and externally. Nobody's going to get an easy ride in this football club or who we play. And to say that we're third in November is nice com compared to where we were. But if we start partying now, you know, then that's it. It's all over. You know, we'll be fighting relegation again. We go for the throat, we go till May, and we go to win every game we play. I love it here. I love the club. I love the fact that people are smiling again because that's very, very important to me. 
to, to go out and see a bunch of people clapping and s singing and laughing and coming up to me in the street and saying, you know, you're doing a good job and thanks very much, that means an awful lot to me. I don't deal with praise very well. That's why I probably strive as hard as I do, because I want to be the best. I want us to be the best. And I'm lucky that I'm at a club that's got a fantastic opportunity to go and get something that nobody else expects us to, to become everybody's favourite second team. And in order to do that, from my perspective, we have to push and push and any boundaries or any comfort zones that are created, we have to smash through them and we have to keep going all the way to the end. And people that are with us are going to have a great journey and those that decide to get off, then they're not. If someone said to you in the summer that by Christmas you'd have had 10 goals and been one of the mainstays of the first team, would you have believed them? No, I wouldn't have believed them, but uh, you know, as it is, I've got 10 goals and I'm totally happy with the way things are going. Myself personally and uh, with the team, uh, the league position that we're in is uh, brilliant. Eddie Boothroyd said he was going to give young players a chance, and that's exactly what he's done, it would appear, with you and some of your colleagues. Yeah, that's right. As you can see, there's a, a mixture of uh, youth and experience in the team. Uh, quite a few of the youngsters, even the uh, YTs, have even come in and done the job. So uh, he's, he's stuck to his word, and um, he's bred in youth. How do you feel about your own form? Because you were seen predominantly as a, as a winger, although you played as a striker in the academy in, in years before, but now you seem quite happy in either role, contributing to the success of the side who are in third right now. Yes, yeah, right. as you say, I did uh, play as a striker when I was uh, in the youth team, and then when I went to the reserves, I was more of a wide man. But um, as Darius got injured, uh, I got moved back up front, and uh, it's just paid off for me, so uh, things, things are going well. How do you feel about the, the, the way things are going at Watford this season? Because there's a sense that everyone expected us to struggle, pundits tipping us for relegation, and yet we've surprised so many people. Are the players here surprised? Well, with the way the boss come in and he was talking about promotion straight away, so um, you know all the boys were uh, up for the challenge really, and everybody uh, in the newspapers and other managers saying that we'd be down fighting relegation. As you can see, we're up on the table, so we're surprising everybody. How do you feel about your partnership with with Marlon King? Because that seems to be blossoming with the, with the absence of Darius Henderson through injury. You've got a chance to to really gel with someone up front there, and Marlon seems to be a, a, an excellent fit for you. Yeah, that's right. As you can see, the partnership's going well. We both scored a uh, goal. I think it's 16 between us. Um, you know, Darius got injured, uh, and then it was both of us put up front, and you know, just in training, out and on matches, and everything's going well. You've been with the club a long time, coming up through, through the academy ranks, and you got your chance a couple of seasons ago. What's new about this season? What feels new? here both at training and, and match days. Just everything about the way the boss has come in, new staff, uh, new players have been added to the squad and you know it's just uh, paid off really for everybody on the staff side and uh, playing side. Everyone says the key word's consistency. We've shown consistency but we've also shown we can win games when we haven't necessarily played that well. Is that something about the makeup of the side, the pace and the power that we've got? Yeah, that's right. As you can see, we have really placed aside when we attack. We're uh, frightened teams. Teams are frightened to come to uh, our home ground. So, um, you know, just keeping us together is uh, what was doing well. Enjoying life at Watford, enjoying working with Adrian Boothroyd. It's, it's, it's a brand new challenge for you, this, this involvement, isn't it? Yeah, it's a brand new challenge. Um, everybody's enjoying it. Everybody out, you know, training's good. Uh, everything's fun around the training ground. So uh, we just take that into games and uh, it's been doing really well for us. Club, a, a brand new season and a brand new chance for yourself at Watford. I, I don't su suspect you could hope for it to go much better. Um, no, it's been a, an excellent start. Um, as you say, brand new start for me uh, coming here to Watford and I'm absolutely delighted with how it's going. Um, the, the place is fantastic. The gaffer's uh, an excellent manager and the boys are 
a different class to be around. So uh, I'm delighted to be here and delighted to be a part of what's happening. When I came to talk to Aidy in the summer, I, I knew his ability from Leeds and uh, I, like I've, I've said often before, you know, he was the reason that I came down to talk uh, to Watford and it doesn't surprise me at all how the team's doing because uh, it, the man's very knowledgeable and he's very charismatic. He knows, uh, he knows what he wants from his team and he knows how to get it across to them as well, which is uh, more important. And he's building something special here, so it might be a surprise to other people outside, but you ask any of the players, it's not, not a surprise to us. We have our targets and we have them set and um, you know, we, we know what to expect of each other. And uh, we'll let you know if we hit them at the end of the season. You, you know, uh, for anyone, for supporters and for people observing the club, anything's possible. You know, if you get a team of players who are willing to do it and who are willing to put themselves on the line for that team, then anything's possible. Whether you've been playing with Jay Demerit, the youthful exuberance, or the experienced head of Malky Mackay, there seems to be a, a, a gelling between you guys. We spoke earlier in the season on, on other times about working as a defensive unit in training. And does that breed a sense of belonging amongst defenders? <laughs> well, everywhere you go, you'll always see there's a... Uh, there's a defenders' union and a goalkeepers' union, etc., etc. But um, it, this uh, goes back to the question you said about you know training paying dividends. Uh, you know we all work hard at our positions in training, and uh, we don't just play with a set two. You know whoever plays in X position always gets uh, you know their chance to to practice in that position. So when it comes to a Saturday, whether you're of the expected to, whether you're sat on the bench, you know that that when you you get on the pitch, you can do that job. And it, it breeds faith in each other. We, we, you know, I don't doubt whether I play with either Malky or Jay, or whether they play with each other, that, that the defence is going to be solid. Seems clearly the right move for you coming to Watford. Just how much are you enjoying it, and how much more have you personally got to give? Um, I, I believe that, that I've got a lot more to give. Um, the gaffer is teaching me new things day by day. Uh, you know, Dave Fockaday, he's, uh, he's excellent. He's, uh, he also is teaching us as a back four how to play together, you know, how to play as a unit. I'm learning more and I, I want to progress more, so I, hopefully there's a lot more to come. But um, who can't enjoy being in a winning side, you know? Who can't enjoy uh, coming in here? Training facilities are excellent, you know, lads have a great laugh and we work hard, it's, uh, it's fantastic. And now a question. How in four weeks do you turn a bar into a mega store? These pictures will help. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the rookery. It still looks like a shell almost. It's hard to believe it, it's going to be ready, but it's going to be a right of colour tonight. Yeah, it will be. And I think that this is the, a tribute to everybody who's played a really key part in this. The last 24 hours are the, the culmination of all the hard work over the last three weeks. Uh, it's a jigsaw puzzle being put together. And uh, yeah, dubbed by you know, 4 o'clock tomorrow, it will be a, a varied uh, set of colours and uh, hopefully full of people who will uh, to uh, enjoy the store. The opening of the rookery, wrote Graham Simpson, the club chairman, in his programme notes, is the start of a journey for this club which, given time, more effort and some luck, will see Vicarage Road transformed. Transformation in 24 hours was spectacular, let alone long term. Merchandise for young. Merchandise for not so young. And it didn't matter who you were on the first day. One transfer window from rail to basket is open even before January. The Rookery store opened before Christmas. Only one man could possibly do the honours. Q Mayhem 
Hugh Sales. Cue the dawning of a bright new era for Watford Football Club and its supporters. James, we were here 24 hours ago and it, and it looked nothing like this, the culmination of a lot of hard work. Yeah, very much so. I want to pay tribute to you know, everybody who's been involved with the project to get the store open on time. And as you can see, it's a great success. Everyone's delighted and, and so they should be. It's been a great achievement. This launch has been a, a long time in the planning and a short time in the making as well. So this store has really been turned from a bar to a superstore very quickly. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's more or less three weeks. And again, it's a, it's a great achievement and tribute to people who have delivered for us. And uh, hopefully fans will see from today that you know, th it was worth making the decision that we've made and um, it will be a long-term benefit for everybody. Are you pleased with what you see today at the end of everything after a long night last night? Yeah, delighted. I think that you know it, it's far exceeded our expectations. The queue was far greater than what I ever imagined. I thought there would be genuine interest today, but uh, to to see a crush and uh, you know be included in the crush is uh, something that you know will live with me. Watford flying high on and off the pitch, then really. Very much so, and I think that this is about the, the new Watford that actually encourages you know, a better interaction with the fans, and I think that the players and the managers today have been fantastic, and I, I thank them as well. at the home of Watford Football Club just 10 days before the start of the new season to debate an eventful close season for the Hornets. Thank you for your patience, both at home and here. A security alert at Bushy Station means uh, it's uh, taken most of us around about two hours to get here. Plenty of new faces, plenty of notable departures. The Elton John concert, the debate over where that money should go, ongoing plans for redevelopment. It's all been crammed into a matter of weeks. Suffice to, uh, suffice to say, not everyone agrees with what's happened. Some might argue not anyone when it comes to certain decisions, but to their credit, the men who've made those decisions are here tonight to answer your questions. We have the Watford chairman, Graham Simpson, manager, Adrian Boothroyd, and the Hornets chief executive, Mark Ashton. We're joined here in the club bar under the Rouse stand by over 200 Watford supporters. Many, many more listening live on Three Counties Radio, on FM and Medium Wave tonight. And we're live around the world on bbc.co.uk slash three counties and also on watfordfc.com. OK, th th this is a, obviously something I do want to talk about. And I have to go back a little bit, and please forgive me, but it's very important because, as everybody knows, I am a fan of Watford. And when I, when I came on board to become chairman, I had to make a very difficult decision. And that was that I want to put the club and I want to stabilise the club as we go forward. It was in a terrible state when I took over. It was probably the lowest time that this club ever had in terms of where it was going. Um, and it's been proved subsequently, you've all been able to read for yourself, that in the first year we lost £10 million. £10 million. The second year, £4 million. And I'm sad to say, and I'm not allowed to say the figure, as Chris, my financial director, has told me, we will lose money this year. We haven't got to the stage of break-even. Now, all this money has to be funded. This is money, I'm not apportioning blame, I'm just telling you the way it is. When I came on board, we didn't have a ground. We had to find £7.5 million to buy the club, buy the ground back. In total, roughly, and give or take a million, since I've been on board, and I'm not trying to get brownie points for this, I'm just trying to tell you the way it is, we've raised £20 million to sort this club out. That's the most important thing. And if in the long term, whatever some of you may think of me now, if in the long term you remember that I came on board to sort this club out when it was in a terrible mess and I achieved that and the club survived, moved forward and went well, then I've done my job. We've relied far too much, in my opinion again, on Hyder's goals. And that's why everybody is so up bitter, upset about the fact that he's gone. Well, the fact is, he has gone. He's been terrific. We've got good money for him. I now am bringing in players that will add to the goal tally from all over the pitch. Because that's where we've got to be. We can't rely on one person. Because if that guy's out injured for four or five games or, heaven forbid, breaks his leg, where are the goal's going to come from? So that's, that's my thinking on that. And as far as the second bit of your question about can they do it at, at Leeds and everywhere else during the season, well, the honest answer to that is yes, they can. But people like Al Bangora as I look at him now, and I hope he's not listening, we'll probably play about 20-odd games this year. Dominic Blizzard might be the one that comes and plays 30 or 40 games. Too many might play one or two games. So there might be a need for somebody else to come in. But there's a pie that needs to be cut up. 
Um, and I'll cut it up as I see fit and with the right players that I can get in. Not all the time I'm juggling around. I won't say that guy's got to stay or that. It's, it's competitive. And that's how the system's got to be. But I understand your, your concerns and I, I think that it's a valid point. And by the start of the season, I will have the players in place that I think can get us through to the next six months, to the next transfer window. Um, and then I'll look at it again. But we've got 20, uh, 26 games, I think 28 games, from now until December the 31st. That's an awful lot of games. So we're going to need players coming in and coming out. And that, youth, that youthful energy will help us. And then we might have to reassess and say, OK, that kid needs a rest now. Let's get somebody else in in January. On the financial side, I have one question. If you've bought the ground back, are you going to use the ground to make money out of it? Because it's pointless having something here that you're only going to use once every two weeks to, to play football on. That's a good question. Thank you very much. And the man that I'd like to answer that, that's been working on that for the last year, is sitting over there on my right. I'll leave Mark to talk to you about that. Most definitely. You, you, you heard me mention a couple of minutes ago about football clubs being run as Dickensian organisations. You tell me a facility that can operate 23 days uh, a year with the overheads that a, a place like this has. Um, one of the reasons that I was brought in, and when I was brought in, I think the chairman, it's fair to say, will, will, will support what I'm going to say. I was given a very strict brief from the board to turn this into a profitable business to run it as a business that operates 365 days a year and turns a profit and, pr and produces finance that will support this guy. Because if we go to a bank today in the current climate and any football club in our division will tell you and say, can I borrow one penny to buy a player, we get laughed out of the building. What they will do is invest money in an infrastructure and a business that will develop and provide money for the, the manager to build a sex, successful team. You can't loan money to put into the team. What you can do is build a stadium, build a business that generates finance, that generates a heartbeat in the local community that supports the manager. And that is one of the major things that we, we've been trying to do. Um, I know that probably later people are going to ask me about the stadium redevelopment. It fits directly into what that gentleman's said. That's a fantastic question. I'm really pleased you asked it because, yes, one of the main reasons I was brought here was to turn this into a business that runs 365 days a year. Uh, following what you were saying, AD, before, um, I, I'm, I'm too uh, a believer as well that uh, you're going to do very well for us. Um, I'm interested by a couple of aspects of what you said. One is you said you're not happy with the squad, not yet. Uh, I'm interested to hear what you have to say about that. When would you be happy with the squad? And maybe it's an open question. Maybe you'd never be happy with the squad, um, but I'd be happy to hear about that. Uh, number two is, um, I've always wondered this, even since Graham Taylor was here, how difficult is it for Watford to attract players that they actually do want? Or are we more constrained by, by purse strings? Um, and the other thing is, and I think this is what most people here are interested in, is having people look, play for us that actually want to play for us continually, not for a year, but for a period of time, let's say, that's more than that kind of uh, year. Um, can we keep hold of the players that you think are good, uh, or are they going to be attracted elsewhere? I know it's down to finance, but um, just a few answers on those, please. Okay. Three questions there. The, the first one, um, as far as the squad's concerned, uh, I believe we've got some talented players at this football club. Uh, I also believe that some of them are not quite ready yet to step onto that stage and perform week in, week out, and I'm sure you'd agree with that. Um, there are also players here that can, and there are targets that I want to bring to this football club before the start of the season, in the next two weeks. Um, and as I found out, as a, a new manager in the first club season, it's not always that uh, easy with uh, agents, wives, chairman, um, players' wives, and uh, milkman and God knows who else getting involved in things when you want to try and bring somebody in. It has been a nightmare. But a nice nightmare because I've learnt from it and it's been an experience. So as far as will I ever be happy, I'll be happy when I think we're where we should be. And that's the promised land. And there is nowhere else to be. To be mid-table or just down below 16th, 18th, that's not right, that's not good enough. If you want to do anything in life, you've got to give it your best shot. And you've got to get players in that want to do that and that are hungry enough to put that shirt on week in, week out and to go and try and win football matches. Not get together in little huddles and, and, and say, OK, well, let's get a draw today. Nah, I don't want a draw. I want to win. And I want to win big. Now, we might not have the financial muscle that some clubs have got, OK, fine. But what we do have here is we have an opportunity, because let's face it, 
Everybody thinks that we are mid-table. Some of you think we're mid-table, because I hear you tonight and it's, well, we shouldn't have done this and we shouldn't have done that. Move on. Move on. Let's go and do it. Or let's keep talking about what we've done. Your choice. We will play an attacking, expansive game here. We will attack teams, we'll go at teams, we will beat them. We might lose a few games, of course we will. We're growing and we're learning. But you will come and watch it and you'll go away and you'll have something to talk about. Not think you're watching Coronation Street, that's probably liable, or something else and being bored out your head. <laughs> so, decide what you want to do, come or don't. That's what I'd say, because it's going to be exciting. Second part of the question, sorry Simon, I do go on sometimes. Attract players. Well. Players don't always come for money, that might seem a little bit strange to, to some, but if you were to survey everybody in this room, and this has been done, not in this room, but uh, in other walks of life and businesses, everybody thinks that people come to work for somebody for money. They don't. They come because they want to grow and they want to develop as people and they want to be respected for what they do. Now, people come here because they believe they're going to get better. They're going to learn. The vibe football's a little village, not just amongst, amongst the fans, but amongst the clubs as well. People are starting to understand what's going on here. Marlon King comes from Nottingham Forest. Are you enjoying it? Oh, yeah, I'm liking this. We're, good. We're, playing, we're playing football. We're trying to go forward, trying to score goals. Oh, really? I was a footballer for 12 years. By the end of it, it was just a job. I was paid for playing football, and it became a job because I played for people, some people, not all, some that just made it boring and uninteresting. What we all have in common here is we all love football and we all get excited by people that can dribble and run past people or a tackle or somebody getting smashed or a referee getting smashed maybe. <laughs> it, it, all, it binds us all together. Now you want what I want. I know you want success and you're going to get it but you've got to get on the boat and say right I want to be part of it I'm going to give him a chance. And as for the players coming in I'll sell the club to them, don't worry about that. I'll take them around, I'll meet these two guys, meet the staff, meet some of you. Keith Perkinshaw made a great point one of the first weeks we were here. He said, there's too many people at this club that think small time. If you're going to be, if you're going to think small time, be small time. I'm thinking big time. Don't put a ceiling on what we can achieve. Yes, we're not going to get there overnight, but we are going to get there. Because you've got enthusiasm like these two guys and the people that work here and some of you deep down are a little bit excited tonight about what I'm saying. Some of you won't have it, but that's okay because I'll win you over, don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult to talk about yourself like terms like this, but I'll have a go anyway. Um, my, my, I, I set myself goals in life, what I want to achieve and where I want to get to. And to some that might seem ridiculous, but to me they're not and that might be just who I am as a person. In order for me to achieve what I want to achieve in the game, um, I have to do something with a club that's probably thought of as a minnow or something that's a, a club that shouldn't be an underdog, if you like, and take it to somewhere where nobody thought possible to take the, to take the next step. That's me being truthful with you, totally truthful with you. For this club, that's got to be a four to five year plan to get where I think we can get to. And I'm not going to tell you where that is on national radio, but. I have, uh, not national radio, is it? No, it's not, no. So, sorry, Simon. <laughs> Thor, Thor, Thor promoted you. If only the wage maybe, maybe next year. If only the wage no, That's his aspiration. Yeah, that's my aspiration. Um, <laughs> I want to get to the very top, and I'll leave that up to you to decide where that is. Um, but as far as this club concerned, I'm in for the long haul. I like that. I see the potential in this place, and it, and it excites me. I see the potential in the young players that we've got here, and it excites me. It ain't going to happen overnight, just like us being a big success. It ain't going to happen overnight. And who knows? It might. You don't know. So I'm in for the long haul, for definite. Because I want to. Because I like it. I like the people. And one thing that uh, on, a, on, a, on the same course, actually, the pro license course, um, Bobby Robson talked about his uh, his chairman and getting a good chairman. You know, this guy doesn't pick the team. If he did, then I won't be here. He's passionate, you can see that. He's, he's a guy that I trust. He's already given me a vote of confidence. That's concerned me. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what they do say on all of these courses is get yourself a good chairman, and I believe I've got that. In my career, I've worked now with, I think it's 18 different managers, and this guy is totally different. It's a bit of a worry, isn't it, that one? <laughs> <laughs> um, football clubs are synonymous for having on the pitch, off the pitch. Something quite unique is happening at this football club. It is one football club. 
I have a management team that I've talked about. Adrian forms part of that management team. Adrian comes to management team meetings with my staff, with my commercial director, with my HR director. We had an away day setting the vision for the company for the next two to three years about a week ago. And when Adrian talked and he opened up a little bit about his plans for the next four to five years. And I, and I said, and my team are here tonight will vouch, if you do that, you won't be here. He got so annoyed with me for saying that, it was unbelievable. He's in it for the long term and we need to we, we need to believe in him we need to join in him because together we can really do this the whole club is coming together we had a trip to denmark the management team on the business side went out with the players we're sitting eating drinking with the players it's one unit the whole club internally is coming together and that's not something that happens very often in this industry and it's down to this guy and that involves you as well because you're the most important people at the end of the day, aren't you? You are. Well, you are, because I'm responsible for the team, and I'm responsible to these two guys, but they're responsible to you, so you're in charge. Now, some of you will have different opinions, and that's great, that's terrific, and some of you are not sure about I'm going to find you out afterwards, by the way. Some of you are not sure about me, and some of you think I'm cheap. And that's fine. And that's fine. It, it really is, because that's great, and that's what I love about this place, because there's so much going for it. There's so much going for it. And it ain't going to be easy. God, no, it's not. And I'm going to get plenty of stick, and that's okay, because that's the path that I've chosen. But I know at the end of it, when we're all walking around the pitch with our kids, and we've got what we need to get to get where we want to get to, when you've got all that yellowing, and you're singing, and you're happy, and you can go home and get drunk and enjoy the fact that we're up where we should be again, then it'll be worth it. And that's what keeps me going. And that's what we're going to do. So get ready. Hi everybody, my name is James Chambers and this is our training ground. Uh, we're going to give you a guided tour and show you what we get up to in the week. Alright, first things first, this is the boss's room, the main man. So if anyone wants to speak to the manager, that's the door you have to knock. We've got a notice board where uh, times and schedules and the fines are, uh, as you can see. Lateness for training, five pound per minute, so you don't want to be late for training. Usually training's ten o'clock, so make sure you're there. What time do you get in? Um, usually I'm in at about a minute to ten, I'm not going to lie. Um, then we've got the physio uh, room here. All the usual kind of stuff, uh, tape in the corner uh, for the strappings when the lads come in early uh, to get the strappings done for training. The beds, medical beds, um, and all the equipment. I'm not going to lie and say I know what it all does, but <laughs> that's their job, so this is a medical room. Right then, uh, as you can see, this is the office, so we'll, we'll just see what's going on in here. Uh, we've got the master uh, on the computer. <laughs> this is where he comes and does whatever it is he's doing. <laughs> this is generally just where the computer is, and uh, sometimes lads just hang out in here before training. Um, so we'll take you up to Wayne's room in a bit, show you where he does his work. Actually, a bit yeah. <laughs> Next thing, this is the uh, staff changing room. I think everyone's done now. Have a little quick. Uh, we might have the team in here somewhere, so you might be able to get that. This is where the, the staff get changed. Very messy, as you can see. So you might want to get on them about that. Um, through here is where this is a uh, kit man's room. Bob, this is where he keeps a lot of the kit and uh, gets things ready for training. Next day, he'll dish out all the kit for the staff and the lads. So that's where that's where his stuff is. All right on the right, we've got Wayne's room we've seen before earlier in the office. This is where he, he works. This is his domain. Uh, a lot of the lads usually come in. Before training, get a bit of a rub down, uh, anything that's tight, and then generally again after training, same kind of thing. Usually see uh, Les Ferdinand down here. I'm, I'm surprised he's not on at the moment, to be honest. Uh, but like I say, this is where Wayne works, and uh, where most of the lads hang out before training as well. 
Uh, right, I'm actually sure what this room is for. I don't really come in here. Um, I think it's where a few of the lads do Pilates. Um, sometimes before training, they have uh, an instructor come in. And uh, I, I know Jordan Stewart does a bit, and Matthew Spring. Is that sure what happened? Yeah, I, I don't even know what that does, to be honest. Uh, I'm not too sure, but like I say, I, I know they come in here and do this stuff before training. Um, that's enough about that room. Right, on the left, we've got the room where a few of the lads should spend a bit more time. Shower room. This is where the lads get cleaned after training. Um, showers around here. This is generally the shower that everyone's after. The most powerful one. Uh, so you see a few fights in here every now and again for that one. Who um, spends the longest? Who spends the longest? That's me. I'm very clean. Who spends the longest as long as they should? Well, I don't want to say Anthony McNamee, Jordan Stewart, Marlon King, Ashley Young, and most of the team. Usually we have ice flats around, and I don't know what they're here today, but sometimes they have ice flats. Uh, especially in the summer, where you come in, uh, you jump in the ice bath for about seven minutes or so, just to cool down after training, um, and, and let your body kind of recover. Um, I think sometimes we have it as well, we've got a lot of games. There's uh, Christmas, for instance, when they pack the games in, there'll be ice baths in here, and uh, all the lads will be saying they don't want to get in, but they will. Right then, um, okay, the next point of call is the change rooms. Uh, just down on the left. So this is where you have to be at 10 o'clock, otherwise, like we, we said earlier, you're going to be late. Um, which I never am, by the way. Um, this is, like I say, where the lads get changed. Uh, in the morning you'll have all the kit hung out and placed down all the way around. Um, like I say, you've got pads and everything over here at the moment because we've just finished training. As you can see, the messy ones, I think that's number three, Jordan Stewart, JS. Marlon King, number nine, Les, Fern Nancy. Very, very messy, as you can see, but like I say, this is where we get changed and uh, where a lot of the banter goes down, shall we say. Right then, after uh, we've come in in the morning, we've been changed, um, around about 20 past, 25 past, this is where we start getting ready and getting our boots, our boots and shin pads on. Um, as you can see, this is our boot room. Some of the boots are dirty. Mine, on the other hand, are clean, so my boot boy will be very pleased this Christmas, I think. Um, this is where the lads come for the boots. So like I said, we have to wear pads in training uh, with, our, with our manager. He, he makes us wear pads, so. Is that not always the case with managers? Um, generally, managers don't um, make you wear pads for training. I'm not sure why, but obviously none of the lads have got a problem with it. We just get on with it, really, you know? Um, so you have to get ready and get our pads on. That's another fine if you, if you haven't got your pads on. So, uh, I'm not sure whose these are up here, fluorescent ones. But uh, as you can see, there's a bit of Mickey taking going on up here. Uh, smiley faces and roll deep and all that kind of stuff. I, I think that might be the, the uh, physio's boots. So uh, one of the lads have been messing around with it. Right then, uh, this is where work starts. Um, as you can see, we've got the, uh, the training pitch. This is our main training pitch, the one we use most of the time. Um, we've got another couple over there and another couple over the back. But like I say, generally, uh, this is the one that we use. Sometimes before and after training, you've got a few lads playing on the head tennis net over there. Having a few games, there's a few lads who think they're not too bad, to be honest, but I'd beg to differ. And then, to be fair, you've got the, uh, the little punishment corner. Generally, when we have uh, five-a-sides or games or whatever, the, the losing side has to do some pull-ups on the, uh, the bars there. I don't know if you can see them. Um, so you don't want to be doing that, believe me, because it's like set to 30 and things like that. And it might not sound too hard, but it is, believe me. <laughs> uh, you've got the shed over there where we keep most of the, uh, the mannequins and the cones and the balls and that kind of stuff. Um, and like I say, this is our training ground. Right then, uh, this is our gym. Um, there's quite a lot of different uh, a variety of stuff in here. As you can see, we've got the uh, medicine balls. If you know I'm doing free weights, you, you can do this uh, medicine kind of stuff, medicine ball stuff, which is pretty good to be honest. I do a lot of this work myself. Um, we've got some fit balls which uh, help with your core stability, uh, things like that. Um, then we've obviously got the machines which speak for themselves usually. Not the easiest to use, but if you ask one of the physios or the fitness coach, Martin, I'm sure he'll be able to tell us. Um, that's a leg one, I think. Like I say, we've got all the equipment here. Uh, 
Um, generally, myself, I mean, a few times a week. Uh, it, it varies depending on the games and that, and when we get chance. But uh, most of the lads use it, to be honest. There's uh, certain s sessions that are put on by the, either the manager or the physios or the fitness coach, which we all have to attend. Um, but like I say, in your own spare time, you're free to come and use it um, and do what you want to do, really. A um, lot of bench pressing and all kinds of stuff, to be honest. Too much to mention. We've got the uh, punch bag up there. A few people fancy themselves on that. I'm not going to mention any names, but yeah. Uh, treadmills and that up in the corner as well. So, like I say, a variety of stuff. Um, obviously, when you're injured, you spend a lot of time in here. Too much time, a lot of people probably say. Um, but obviously, you got to get yourself back fit, and this is a place to come and do it, I think. Right, and this is our canteen. Uh, generally, you come in, uh, put your stuff down here. No caps in the canteen, otherwise, that's a fine. Um, as you can see, this is where the letters, the, the fan mail and the, and the things like that, the letters to us. Who gets the most? Um, so look today, I think Mark has got a bit, usually the likes of Marlon King and Ashley, I think they usually get the most, uh, to be honest. Um, and you probably know why, because they score all the goals. It's always the way. Like I say, uh, after training, uh, we usually have a few things to sign. Um, with it being close to Christmas, um, there'll be uh, more things coming than that. Like I say, come in here, sit a signature on a few things and, uh, and then get a, something to eat. Um, like I say, in here we've got um, a few things to kind of keep us occupied as we're uh, bored at the time. Uh, we've got a foosball table. Uh, not many lads play this, to be honest. But as you can see in, in the background, we've got a few lads uh, playing table tennis. Let's have a little look and see what they're like. See? Good shot, do it, Lee. Right then, uh, on the left here, we've got where we eat. This is our food. Uh, a lot of healthy stuff. Vegetables and uh, salad, things like that. There's a little condiments on there. Uh, coffee, tea, just usual stuff really. And uh, then we've got the food. We usually have like a lot of pasta and uh, chicken and things like that. As you can see, I think the lads have uh, just finished most of the stuff off, so uh, there's not much left. Um, but again, like I say, it's mostly, mostly healthy and uh, coming after training and make sure we have uh, something to eat, make sure we're full uh, for the trip home. Right then, uh, I think that's the end of our tour. Um, Hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you've had a good time. Keep supporting and uh, hopefully we'll do some good things this season and uh, we'll be where we need, we all want to be, which is Premier League. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Take care. I'm off home. Get some rest.